Now, Sports Talk with Broads. Here's Hunter Brody. Win a game and make the playoffs. It's it's that simple. Win a football game up in MetLife and squeak into the playoffs with a 9-7 and record and host a playoff game. Earlier this week, I was way more concerned than I am now. My gut feeling earlier in the week was, ooh, I'm kind of nervous. The Giants might make it happen. They don't have anything to play for. They can play loose. Daniel Jones, Saquon Barkley, they can just have fun, go out there and compete for the last game of the season. Now I'm starting to realize there's something going with this Eagles team. They have swagger, more swagger than they've had all year. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that they should have uh, as much confidence in themselves as the Baltimore Ravens, but compared to what they were earlier this this season, yeah, they have some swag going offensively when it comes to moving the football and being able to move the chain. So I just think with everything that's at stake, there's no way. But I also said that against the Miami Dolphins. I said there was no way they lose that game. So, I mean, it's definitely possible to lose. They are 8-7 and seven for a reason. They are about 500 for a reason because they are an inconsistent team. But just knowing what's on the line, knowing they took down the Dallas Cowboys at home and they're looking right in the face at a playoff berth, I can't process and I can't comprehend that there is a chance that their mindset wouldn't be focused. Week 12 of a season, week 13 of a season. Okay, I can see why a team would lose focus for a week. But with what the stakes are, and knowing that they can win the division with a victory, there's no way that they are not so dialed in and prepared to battle, right? I mean, it's it's so obvious that they have to be so dialed in and clocked in to the most elite degree that there's no way that they aren't, right? I mean, is this me trying to convince myself that? I hope I don't sound too crazy. They are 8-7 and seven for a reason. I always dial back to that. But still, with the way Doug Peterson has his teams playing in December, with the way Carson Wentz has turned the page completely, I believe that this team will be ready to go from the coin flip. Now, if they aren't, shame on me for believing that that they're they're a different team. Shame on me. But I believe that they are a different team. Because they are not the same team that had Nelson Aguilar and Alshon Jeffrey. And Miles Sanders of the beginning of the season. This is now a team of, (laughs) I can't believe I'm saying this, Greg Ward, J.J. Ortega-Whiteside, Dallas Goddard, an unbelievable rookie of the year version of Miles Sanders, Jordan Howard getting thrown back into the mix with a little bit of Boston Scott. Now, one name I did not mention is Zach Ertz. He will not be playing. It's definitely going to hurt this team. This is Carson Wentz's safety blanket. He looks in... Zach Ertz's direction whenever he needs to, whenever he he feels like there's so much pressure on him, where is he looking, where is he looking, bang Zach Ertz. He will be out of this game. But I still think that there is enough for the Eagles to secure the W. There's plenty to talk about, but before we do, we need to hear a word from my sponsor, SeatGeek. If you use the promo code BRODES at SeatGeek's checkout page, you get $20 off of your total purchase. So you get to go to the game and get free parking? Free beer, free food. It's a no-brainer. Use the promo code BRODES today. Now, there's going to be rain in this game. The forecast states that today, at least. I mean, of course, you can be wrong when it comes to being a weatherman. I mean, that's why it's such a great job. You can be wrong all the time and still have a job. I guess guess you can argue it's the same with sports talk radio, right? But here's the thing. When it comes to the weather, there's potentially going to be rain that is going to play a factor in this game Uh, they're gonna run the ball run the ball run the ball so we think I mean it would be easier to run the ball it gives the idea out there that maybe the quarterbacks drop back less because the more risk of a fumble and both quarterbacks fumble the ball so much so maybe the head coaches think all right let's pound the rock some I think Jordan Howard coming back in the mix is going to be tremendous 
A lot of fans are nervous that maybe Doug Peterson will take away Miles Sanders' touches and slide in Jordan Howard and get a little Jordan Howard happy. I don't think it's going to be to that degree. And I, I'm also under the belief that you can't really mess this up even if you were to give Jordan Howard more touches. Miles Sanders has been magnificent. As I stated, arguably, rookie of the year. If you want to have that conversation with some guys, Josh Jacobs, Terry McLaurin, I mean, there's no one who really stands out to this obnoxious degree. I mean, you can argue since he's turned the page, Miles Sanders has been at the top of the game. But even if you did throw Jordan Howard in the mix more, it's not going to hurt this team. We've been screaming for weeks now, run the ball, run the ball, run the ball, time of possession, let's keep moving the chains, let's keep running the ball, let's keep the ball in our favor offensively, let's move downfield, let's keep their offense off the field, let's tire out their defense. We've been screaming for that for so long this season. I don't think it can hurt. Even if Miles Sanders does get less touches, which I'm not Rooting for that, I, I, I want to keep Miles Sanders getting the same touches and implementing Jordan Howard throughout that. But I'm just saying, even if Doug Peterson elects to use Jordan Howard and take away some of Sanders' touches, I still don't think that hurts the team to this obnoxious degree. It's still going to be fine, in my opinion. Now, he's coming off of not being able to practice. Not No, I'm sorry. He was able to practice. He's coming off of not being cleared for contact for weeks, so I don't know if we're going to see him getting these double-digit carries or not. I just know how Doug Peterson works sometimes, and you know I'm going to guess that he might get some touches that Miles Sanders normally would. But I don't necessarily think it's it's as bad of an idea as some think. If you ask me if there is one thing that somewhat gives me an awkward feeling inside in terms of the Eagles. It's going to be the cornerbacks. Jalen Mills is questionable. We know Ronald Darby is out. So, originally, when looking at this game, you thought Jalen Mills would be on one side, Sidney Jones or Rasul Douglas on the other. Rasul Douglas was probably going to start the game, I believe, Doug Peterson said that, and it would be a a mix between him and Sidney Jones getting thrown in there. Now it's possible that Sidney Jones is on one side and Rasul Douglas is on the other if Jalen Mills does not go. As I stated, he's questionable. I think we'll find out about him right before kickoff, right before the game. He's probably going to try it out throughout pregame warm-ups, and if he can't go, then he can't go, and and we will find out then. But there is a possibility that it's Sidney Jones and Rasul Douglas, and that truly concerns me. Not that Daniel Jones is some legit insane threat. Not that, you know, this offense is so high-powered it scares me, but it's because I don't trust them. I don't trust those cornerbacks at all. At all. That would be really scary to me if those two were playing outside. Now, maybe you move Avante Maddox to the outside, but I think he's been playing so solid in the slot, I would be skeptical of of moving him because he has been really solid there. If you do move him, then maybe you put Cravon LeBlanc in the slot, and is that better than having Sidney Jones and Rasul Douglas both on the outside? I don't know if Avante Maddox can handle the outside, to be honest with you. I really think he thrives when he's playing that slot position. So it's it's definitely going to be a jungle back there. There's going to be so many opportunities, I think, for for the Giants to maybe cash in at times. So we're just going to have to limit that. The question is, throughout this city, would you rather see Eli Manning or Daniel Jones? Eli Manning would have the last game of his career effect. The team would really go out and sell out for him because they want to leave on such a good note with Eli Manning's career. Or Daniel Jones, who fumbles the ball a lot. He's a rookie. He just throws the ball around. He has some moments. There's no denying that. He's coming off of a five-touchdown game, a five-touchdown performance. So he does have some moments. He does make some some crazy throws. He's not afraid to put the ball into double coverage. I mean, he's just not afraid to sling it at times. I think I would still go with Eli Manning just because I think he stinks. I mean, I think he's so done. It's crazy. I think his career is just so over. I would have asked for Eli Manning, but I'm not afraid of Daniel Jones. I I think that the Giants team will play loose and carefree because there's no pressure on them. While the Eagles have all the pressure, they have all the playoff hopes on the line. So I'm not really concerned with 
the Giants as a whole. But if you ask me what was the one thing that made me feel a little nauseous looking at the Eagles, it is that cornerback play. But as a whole, I just don't know where this Giants team is going to be able to to really beat down the Eagles if the Eagles are going to come prepared. And that's the big if, if the Eagles are going to come prepared. But as I stated from the top, how can I assume that they won't? Because the stakes are so big, because here it is, the playoffs, here it is, it's right there, take it. Because of that, I can't see this team pulling a Sixers and falling to a lesser opponent because they're not prepared to work hard. Doesn't everyone know in the Eagles locker room that they are going to have to work so hard and that they're going to have to be so prepared to make their play every snap? You would think so. You would think so. The game plan for the for the Eagles defensively would be to stop Barkley, just like they stopped Zeke. Their game plan against the Dallas Cowboys, stop Zeke, and make Dak Prescott beat you with the throws. That's the only way to do it. That's the only way to do it. You have Barkley, who has been tearing it up since the last few weeks. I mean, he's been running really well. He's been a factor. He's been getting a ton of yards. So, you know, he's been back on his Saquon Barkley-like self. This The Eagles are going to have to stop him and have to create a, a game plan where they're one-dimensional. Make Daniel Jones beat you. Then it comes down to the cornerback stopping the wide receivers. It's a shame, though, that the defense is so much different on the road than they are at home. I mean, that's just facts. So they average, what, 12 more points allowed on the road? You can't just throw that out the window. You can't just crumble that up and throw it in the trash. It's a meaningful statistic. There's a reason why on the road they just can't get it together. So, you know, I mean, you got to keep an eye on that. But that's what you have to do. You you can't do it the other way. If you're Jim Schwartz, you can't say, well, let let, Ze- let Zeke, I'm sorry, not Zeke, let Saquon Barkley run all the time, but don't allow the big play by the wide receiver. You can't live that way. They're going to move the chains. They're going to hold the possession. They're going to have the ball, and Carson Wentz will be sitting on the sidelines waiting to get on the field, chopping at the bits. So the only way to do it is you're going to have to find a way to to stack the box because that's the only way to really stop Saquon Barkley to the level that you're going to have to, and then you're going to have to force your cornerbacks to make plays. Now, the one thing I mentioned is Daniel Jones and his fumbling issue. Maybe there's a way to generate some sort of pressure. Maybe there's a way to really get at Daniel Jones, force him to make mistakes, force him to feel uncomfortable, and then he can just make mistakes. I mean, he's a rookie quarterback. Jim Schwartz normally does very well against rookie quarterbacks. Now, Dwayne Haskins ends up looking like Peyton Manning in his prime when the Eagles went up against the Redskins, but here's an opportunity to go up against a rookie quarterback where Jim Schwartz normally does a great job. We got to find ways to get pressure. Fletcher Cox, uh, Vinny Curry, can't believe I'm saying that, Josh Schwett, Derek Barnett, these guys are going to have to get to the quarterback Brandon Graham they're gonna have to force him to be in these situations where he feels uncomfortable maybe get a get a hand on him because he just can't keep the football in his hands we thought Carson Wentz was bad which he is which he definitely is but we can argue that Daniel Jones might be worse when it comes to putting the football on the ground I thought this was hilarious I I I actually heard NFL Network talking about how this is Carson Wentz's biggest game of his career. Couldn't believe it. I mean, are you kidding me? That has been that has been said for I don't know seven weeks. I mean, it's just ridiculous to think. Well, now this is the biggest game. Oh well, now this is the big. Oh, this is the biggest. This is. They're they're big games. I mean, yeah. I mean, this is a big game. It's essentially another playoff game. You win, you're in the playoffs. It's big. It's big. But we can't be saying that every game is Carson Wentz's biggest game of his career. I think it was valid against the Dallas Cowboys. I think it was. I mean, this is a big game. I'm not saying it's not. But let's chill out a little bit with that. Because guess what? If, if the Eagles take care of business and they win, what's the next game? The, what, what's, the, what's the next game, the first playoff game? Let me guess. Would it be the biggest game of his career? So, you know. Something that no one's really talking about. Well, it has been thrown out there, but not to a big conversation point. Is Jake Elliott 
it can come down the points. It can come down the field goals. It can come down to extra points. This dude has been off. This guy has not been making his kicks since he got paid. Who knows? This can come down to a situation where the Eagles can put themselves up nine instead of being up six and kicky boy comes out and he misses a 42 yarder and then here comes the giants and win by one who knows i mean i'm just saying it can really come down to getting those extra points we talk about how the eagles only scored 17 points against dallas but they left six points up on the board and 23 points compared to 17 you look at the offense differently you look at the game and how it played out differently because it wouldn't come down to dak prescott trying to score a touchdown in a two-point conversion late in the game so you you know, Jake Elliott plays a big-time role in this one, and the dude has to cash in. He has to have the proper mindset. He's got to find a way to make his kicks. Uh, I know it's not easy at times, but, dude, you're getting paid. You got the contract. It's your job. Make the damn field goal. Put it in between the uprights. We're going to need you here. This is not the time for Jake Elliott to be in a in a mental lapse. I mean, early this season, he was knocking down everything. He was very consistent. He earned the contract. Now, he's falling apart mentally. Let's go. Get it together. One thing that I think is going to be very important in this one is Doug Peterson. And Doug Peterson without Zach Ertz is going to have to get very creative with Dallas Goddard, J.J. Ortega Whiteside, Miles Sanders, Josh Perkins, and... Greg Ward, I mean, he's going to have to be creative. The The Giants defense doesn't scare me as if they are this team that will be able to shut down this offense because they have so many playmakers on the other side of the field. You know what I'm saying? It's not as if this Giants team is scary. They have the legion of boom and, you know, they're, they're going to be this freaky, freaky team. But I do think it will take some creativity out of Doug, and he's going to have to make some things happen that we haven't seen yet this season. There was that one play last week where Greg Ward had the ball out of shotgun, and maybe we thought a trick play was coming. Carson Wentz went out to the right side, and he was a wide receiver. That's something that will come into effect, I think, down the road. Now, I don't know if they need a trick play in this one. Maybe you keep the trick play for a playoff game if the Eagles find a way to to take care of business. I, I don't want to always look ahead into what's going to happen and the playoffs and all that because you got to win this game first. So when I make a statement like that, I always backtrack and say, you know, if they take care of business because I don't want to get too ahead of myself and start thinking playoff stuff when they need to win this football game. But... I don't know if they're going to use that formation again in this game. To me, this isn't the time to use it because you should be able to beat the New York Giants without having to use a trick play. And and talking about being able to win a game without certain things, I will say this. You know, when it comes to Lane Johnson and Zach Ertz, if the Eagles are sitting them out because they're thinking, well, we can use you later on, you're able to play, but we can we can hold you off a week, that's ridiculous. And I don't think they are doing that because I think Zach Ertz obviously has an issue, right? I mean, he's banged up and he has the broken ribs. And Lane Johnson, if he could play, that dude is a warrior and I think he would absolutely play. So I'm not saying the Eagles are doing this, but to me, there's no reason why the Eagles should have a mindset of well, we can do without them. We don't need them. We can hold them off. We don't need them. At this point in the season, right? I mean, you need everyone. It's more important to get in than it is to say, well, we really need them for next week in the playoffs. You got to get in first. And once again, I'm not saying the Eagles are doing this, but I'm just saying if they had that mindset, that's the wrong mindset to have because in my opinion, you play the players if they are capable of playing. You play them in this game to get in rather than saying, well, we can win without them. As I stated many of times, they are 8-7 and seven for a reason. They only have hopes for the playoffs because this division is a dumpster fire and a nightmare. But I am very honored to be in this division, which is a dumpster fire and a nightmare because it gives my team an opportunity to sneak in. I can't wait. I truly can't wait. I I mentioned this when they played the Cowboys. I had the butterflies. I was walking around the kitchen pacing. I was freaking out. I couldn't handle it. I didn't even like the feeling at times. I remember looking at my girlfriend saying, I hate this feeling. 
I hate this feeling. I don't I don't know why it keeps happening to me. You know, this is me looking at her, by the way. And if you're listening to me on the podcast version, you can't see my face, so you don't know what I'm saying. But here I am looking at her. Why does this keep happening? Do you get this feeling? And she looks at me with this face like, no, what the hell are you talking about? This is just a football game. And then I realize, you don't get me. You don't understand. And then I question everything. I'm just kidding. I don't know where I'm going with this. My point is, I get nervous. I get scared. I I start pacing around. I think I'll have that feeling when the game's going on just because I know what can happen or what won't happen if things go the wrong way. So I'm just going to naturally have that. All that means is the game is meaningful and it's meaningful football. You'd rather have it that way than be the Giants who know the season's over after this game, right? So you'd rather have that feeling. I'm not saying I don't want to have that feeling because that just means the games are important. But it is not fun at times. And that is one thing, by the way, that that can play a role in this when it comes to the Giants. They know it's all over. They They know it's all done. It can go positively saying they're loose, they're just going to have fun, they're just going to go out there and play, knowing it's their last game, they'll have a good time and all that. They can just not have to be so stressed out about the game. But at the same time, they can just be going through the motions because it's tough to get up for Week 17. I actually heard Brian Westbrook talk about this. When it's Week 17 and you know that the season is over without the playoffs, it's tough. But there's so many things that have to be addressed. What's the head coach's situation? If he's comfortable, things change. If he's on the hot seat, the environment is different in Week 17. And you can argue that Pat Shermer is on the hot seat. There's going to be discussions about head coaching changes and coordinator changes and so many personnel changes when it comes to this giant staff. So that'll keep everyone uptight and that'll keep everyone more focused than if it's Sean Payton, Andy Reid, or or some of these top coaches that just had an off season. You know what I'm saying? So we'll see how it all plays out. Don't forget about the rain. Don't forget about Jordan Howard coming back. There's a lot of things that, that are going to play into effect in this one. Carson Wentz has to deliver. He needs to be sharp. He has been sharp. He has been a leader. He needs to stay with that mindset and keep everyone on the same page and move the football around, be strong. Make those throws that he's been making. Maybe move out of the pocket because we all know when he moves out of the pocket, he can make things happen. I I, I sense a victory, though. I do. And the only thing that scares me about that is over the last few weeks, whenever I felt bad about the game, the Eagles won. Whenever I felt good about the game, the Eagles lost. Whew. Take some deep breath. Take some deep breaths, broads. We're going to be all right. We're going to win this game. Let me know your thoughts down below. Thank you so much for watching. Hit that thumbs up button, subscribe, and I will see you next time.